Hewitt. I spoke to David Drucker during the break, and I put that over at YouTube along with the first part of the interview. It is my habit now to take people into the commercial news traffic, weather, sports, and commercial break on radio and on the Salem News Channel. Then I make it available to you on YouTube. If you're not a subscriber, it's free. You just go subscribe to Hugh Hewitt. I only put up interviews there in monologues. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Har Harley do three monologues and I normally do one. This is a monologue that is immediate. It just occurred to me. So it's not prepped. It's just I'm looking at the cut sheet Dwayne gave me and I realize I don't think there's ever been a worse vice presidential candidate than Tim Walls. And I'm trying to remember Jack Kemp disappointed us in his debate with Walter Mondale in the 1996 vice presidential debate. Right? That was a disappointment. But he was still a pretty good candidate. And Dan Quayle wasn't great, but he wasn't bad, and people got to like him and eventually realized that he was a very smart guy. The opposite is happening with Tim Walz. But by, for purposes of contrasting, nobody votes for vice president, but if you're the one person who worries about that, here's J.D. Vance yesterday doing a press conference outside of the Minneapolis, Minnesota police precinct that Tim Walz allowed to burn down during the 2020 riots after the murder of George Floyd, cut number 20. First, I just want to say a little bit about what this building behind us represents. So you can see it's all boarded up. This is, of course, the headquarters of the third precinct, which was burned down um, thanks to burned out, I should say, thanks to Tim Walz's completely failed leadership. And, you know, talking to these folks behind me, I mean, these are law enforcement officers. A lot of them were here, some of them for many days when this was allowed to happen. And remember, during those riots, these guys were given up for dead. Their police chief told them to stand down, hoping that it would save their lives. Uh, a couple of them just told me just now their fear that they would be killed by the violent mob that was attacking this precinct. And the important question is, what were their leaders in particular? What was Governor Tim Walz doing to keep these officers safe and to bring order to the city of Minneapolis? The answer was absolutely nothing. They describe being left for dead by the person who wants to be the vice president of the United States. And to all the folks who are watching this, I think the message is very simple. That do we want a kind of leader who stands with the law enforcement, who fights for them, who protects their lives as they go about keeping us safe? Or do we want someone who encourages rioters and looters to burn down this precinct, who leaves the officers for dead, and then a president who then bails out some of those same rioters and looters out of prison? I think we want the law and order president. We want somebody who stands with our law enforcement, and most importantly, who stands with the communities that depend on law enforcement. And that means we want Donald J. Trump as president. So J.D. Vance is not speaking with a teleprompter. Yale Law School teaches you a few things. So does the Marine Corps. So does The Ohio State University. Obviously, it doesn't teach you how to beat the Ducks yet. We'll beat the Ducks later. But J.D. Vance, very good. In fact, J.D. Vance knows there's a news cycle unfolding about the plagiarism scandal engulfing Kamala Harris. So he comments on it. Cut number 19. I saw today, uh, actually, a story that Kamala Harris apparently copied some significant chunks of her book from Wikipedia. So if you want a president with their own ideas, vote for Donald Trump. If you want a president who copies her own ideas from Wikipedia, vote for Kamala so, Harris. Okay. All right, so this is just effortless on his part. He's effortless. He's a learning machine. He's very good at this. Compare and contrast with Tim Walz. Uh, I, you know, it was once said about Harold Carswell, an unfortunate nominee for the Supreme Court by Richard Nixon, that mediocre people need representation too. I don't want to quote that in the context of Tim Walls, as it would be unfair to mediocre people. Here he is in Green Bay yesterday, cut number 13. Donald Trump over the weekend was talking about using the U.S. Army against people who disagree with him. Just so you're clear about that, that's you. That's what he's talking about. This is not some mythical thing out there. He called it the enemy within. And to Donald Trump, anybody who doesn't agree with him is the enemy. I tell you that not to make you fearful or anything. I tell you that because we need to whip his butt and put this guy behind us. I, I really have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, Donald Trump at Coachella may have criticized Mark Milley. I like Mark Milley, but Trump doesn't. And uh, I, I don't know what he's talking about, but it's ridiculous. He has another ridiculous claim, but it's kind of a blowback on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, cut number 14. Look, you all know it. 
we can't have four more years of this. We won't have four more years of it. We won't. Four more years of this is what we've been having. Biden-Harris. Inflation, 10 million migrants, lower defense spending, not standing by our ally Israel. She will be the most anti-Israel president in history. Now, she does go to church. I have a new Fox News column out this morning on Kamala's church-going day. I would love to know. Brett one is not going to waste the question on this. How many times did you go to church in the last year? I would really like to know that. Now, it's very hard on congregations when presidents go to church, but W did it, and HW did it, and I did it all the time. Maybe it's harder now, but I just have never known. I thought Kamala Harris was a secular humanist. Who knew? Well, Tim Walls also did a... Uh, a local television interview with WGAL Channel 8, the NBC affiliate in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Let's begin with cut number 15. U.S. Customs and Border Protection say there were 10 million illegal crossings in the first years of the Biden administration. Was it a mistake to overturn former President Trump's border policies and talk negatively toward the wall? Well, the first day in office, uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris put a proposal forward. And what we know is, is that crossings are down now than when Donald Trump left office. We also know that there is a solution to this. It's a bipartisan bill. Uh, Number one, it's a lie that they proposed that bill on the first day in office. It was proposed and negotiated in 2024 between Jim Lankford, a fine Oklahoma senator, who was told by the Republican conference, get the best deal that you can. He did. It wasn't even remotely close enough. It was an amnesty bill, and it did not have the wall, so the conference rejected it. It was not proposed on day one. That was a lie. Tim Walls, cut number 16. Voters are worried about the economy, prices at the grocery store, the gas pumps. They've risen under the Biden-Harris administration. What would you do differently if elected? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, we're seeing inflation start to cool some. We're seeing uh, proposals put forward, whether it's price gouging. Look, Donald Trump's disastrous handling of COVID uh, left a bit of a mess, but we're focusing on that. Okay, so she doesn't... Barbara Barr, by the way, is asking great questions. They're under 30 seconds. They're very direct. What would you do different? He has no answer. He said, oh, Donald Trump left us a mess under COVID. No, he didn't. He left you a vaccine. Honest to goodness, these people. Cut number 17, Barbara Barr. Remember, this is Barbara Barr, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania needs fracking. Cut number 17. Fracking, a very important industry, natural gas here in Pennsylvania. Four years ago, candidate Harris was going to ban fracking. She has now changed her position. Do you think the voters are going to buy that, that she has changed her mind in four years? And how important is this industry to Pennsylvania and America? Yeah, well, four years ago she said it, and four weeks ago she said it, and it is important. I think what people are going to recognize is America is producing more natural gas and more oil than at any time in our history, but we're also producing more clean energy jobs that gives Pennsylvania a a bridge to the future. Look, that's simply the fact on this. Donald Trump wants to make somewhat of an issue. The vice president's been very clear. No, she has not been very clear. She is against fracking. It's in her bones. It's in her bones. People don't believe her. She's a plagiarist. One more. By the way, Barbara Barr gets an Emmy for this. It's succinct. It's concise. It's on point. Cut number 18. We're focused on bringing prices down, focusing on the things middle class families care about, and then focusing on tackling the big issues like Medicare and stay at home care for seniors. Those are really uh, innovative ideas. Yet polls show that many Americans and Pennsylvanians think the economy was better over the Trump administration and they liked his tax cuts. They helped everyone. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that he left with 10 million people out of work, 9 million jobs closed, and we were in the middle of the global pandemic. I don't think people want to go back to tens of thousands of Americans dying. Is he, is he actually incapable of responding to a question? He is the worst vice presidential nominee. It's obscured by the fact that Kamala Harris is the most radical, least prepared, and vacuous presidential nominee of modern times. We can't say that going back, because we don't have records of whether or not uh, candidates from the 19th century were, were empty, gaseous balloons floating around. But none of them came out of the San Francisco, Berkeley, Montreal era of Kamala Harris. I just think, just compare. Donald Trump picked J.D. Vance as a bridge to the future. Kamala Harris picked Tim Walls because they needed the Elmer Fudd vote. Uh, I want to... David Urban from CNN this weekend. They wanted the Elmer Fudd vote. 
That might be the Dwayne boat. I don't know. Dwayne's World can cover that today. I want to remind everyone, Dwayne's got a podcast, Dwayne's World. I've got a podcast, Highly Concentrated View. I've got a YouTube channel as well, and I encourage you to subscribe to that so you can get every interview and every monologue.